Good morning and welcome to our time together this morning. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. This morning's psalm is Psalm 77. I cry aloud to God, aloud to God, that he may hear me. In the day of my trouble I seek the Lord. In the night my hand is stretched out without wearying. My soul refuses to be comforted. I think of God and I moan. I meditate and my spirit faints. You keep my eyelids from closing. I am so troubled that I cannot speak. I consider the days of old and remember the years of long ago. I commune with my heart in the night. I meditate and search my spirit. Will the Lord spurn forever and never again be favourable? Has his steadfast love ceased forever? Are his promises at an end for all time? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he in anger shut up his compassion? And I say, it is my grief that the right hand of the Most High has changed. I will call to mind the deeds of the Lord. I will remember your wonders of old. I will meditate on all your work and muse on your mighty deeds. Your way, O God, is holy. What God is so great as our God? You are the God who works wonders. You have displayed your might among the peoples. With your strong arm you redeemed your people, the descendants of Jacob and Joseph. When the waters saw you, O God, when the waters saw you, they were afraid and very deep trembled. The clouds poured out water, the skies thundered. Your arrows flashed on every side. The crash of your thunder was in the whirlwind. Your lightnings lit up the world. The earth trembled and shook. Your path was through the sea, your path through the mighty waters. Yet your footprints were unseen. You led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading is taken from the book of Judges, chapter 9, beginning at verse 22. Abimelech ruled over Israel for three years, but God sent an evil spirit between Abimelech and the lords of Shechem, and the lords of Shechem dealt treacherously with Abimelech. This happened so that the violence done to the seventy sons of Jerubal might be avenged, and their blood be laid on their brother Abimelech, who killed them, and on the lords of Shechem, who strengthened his hands to kill his brothers. So, out of hostility to him, the lords of Shechem sent ambushes on the mountain tops. They robbed all who passed by them along that way, and it was reported to Abimelech. When Gaal, son of Ebed, moved into Shechem with his kinsfolk, the lords of Shechem put confidence in him. They went out into the field and gathered the grapes from their vineyards, trod them and celebrated. Then they went into the temple of their god, ate and drank, and ridiculed Abimelech. Gaal, son of Ebed, said, Who is Abimelech, and who are we of Shechem, that we would serve him? Did not the son of Jerubal and Zabel, his officers, serve the men of Hamor, father of Shechem? Why then should we serve him? If only this people were under my command, then I would remove Abimelech. I would say to him, increase your army and come out. When Zebul, the ruler of the city, heard the words of Gaal, son of Ebed, his anger was kindled. He sent messengers to Abimelech at Arumah, saying, Look, 
Gaal, son of Ebed, and his kinsfolk have come to Shechem, and they are stirring up the city against you. Now therefore go by night, you and the troops that are with you, and lie in wait in the fields. Then early in the morning, as soon as the sun rises, get up and rush on the city. When he, heard, he and the troops that are with him come out against you, you may deal with them as best you can. So Abimelech and all the troops with him got up by night and lay in wait against Shechem in four companies. When Gaal, son of Ebed, went out and stood in the entrance of the gate of the city, Abimelech and the troops with him rose from the ambush. And when Gaal saw them, he said to Zebul, Look, people are coming down from the mountaintops. And Zebul said to him, The shadows on the mountains look like people to you. Gaal spoke again and said, Look, people are coming up from Tabor Erez, and one company is coming from the direction of Elon Mionim. Then Zebul said to him, Where is your boast now? Who is Abimelech that we should serve him? Are not these the troops you made light of? Go out now and fight with them. So Gaal went out at the head of the lords of Shechem and fought with Abimelech. Abimelech chased him and he fled before him. Many fell wounded up to the entrance of the gate. So Abimelech resided at Arumah and Zebul drove out Gaal and his kinsfolk so that they could not live on at Shechem. On the following day, the people went out into the fields. When Abimelech was told, he took his troops and divided them into three companies and lay in wait in the fields. When he looked and saw the people coming out of the city, he rose up against them and killed them. Abimelech and the company that was with him rushed forward and stood at the entrance of the gate of the city while the two companies rushed on all who were in the fields. Abimelech fought against the city all that day. He took the city and killed the people that were in it, and he razed the city and sowed it with salt. When the lords of the Tower of Shechem heard of it, they entered the stronghold of the temple of El Bereth. Abimelech was told all the lords of the Tower of Shechem were gathered together. So Abimelech went up to Mount Zalmon, he and all the troops that were with him. Abimelech took an axe in his hand, cut down a bundle of brushwood, and took it up and laid it on his shoulder. Then he said to the troops with him, What you have seen me do, do quickly as I have done. So every one of the troops cut down a bundle, and following Abimelech put it against the stronghold. And they set the stronghold of fire over them, so that all the people of the town of Shechem also died, about a thousand men and women. Then Abimelech went to Thebes, and encamped against Thebes, and took it. But there was a strong tower within the city, and all the men and the women and all the lords of the city fled to it and shut themselves in, and they went to the roof of the tower. Abimelech came to the tower and fought against it, and came near to the entrance of the tower to burn it with fire. But a certain woman threw an upper millstone on Abimelech's head and crushed his skull. Immediately he called to the young man who carried his armor and said to him, Draw your sword and kill me, so people will not say about me, A woman killed him. So the young man thrust him through, and he died. When the Israelites saw that Abimelech was dead, they all went home. Thus God repaid Abimelech for the crime he committed against his father in killing his seventy brothers. And God also made all the wickedness of the people of Shechem fall back on their heads, and on them came the curse of Jotham, son of Jerubal. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked abandon their ways, and the unrighteous their thoughts. Return to the Lord who will have mercy, to our God who will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down from above, and return not again but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread to eat, so is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me fruitless, 
but it will accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the task I gave it. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our second reading is taken from Gospel of Luke, chapter 16, beginning at verse 1. Then Jesus said to the disciples, There was a rich man who had a manager, and charges were brought to him that this man was squandering his property. So he summoned him and said to him, What is this that I hear about you? Give me an account of your management, because you cannot be my manager any more. Then the manager said to himself, What will I do now, now that my master is taking the position away from me? I am not strong enough to dig, and I am ashamed to beg. I have decided what to do, so that when I am dismissed as manager, people may welcome me into their homes. So, summoning his master's debtors, one by one, he asked the first, How much do you owe my master? He answered, A hundred jugs of oil. He said to him, Take your bill, sit down quickly, and make it fifty. Then he asked another, And how much do you owe? He replied, A hundred containers of wheat. He said to him, Take your bill and make it eighty. And his master commended the dishonest manager because he had acted shrewdly. For the children of this age are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than are the children of light. And I tell you, make friends for yourselves by means of dishonest wealth, so that when it is gone, they may welcome you into the eternal homes. Whoever is faithful in a very little is faithful also in much. And whoever is dishonest in a very little is dishonest also in much. If then you have not been faithful with the dishonest wealth, who will entrust you with the true riches? And if you have not been faithful with what belongs to another, who will give you what is your own? No servant can serve two masters, for a servant will either hate the one and love the other, or to be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. The Pharisees, who were lovers of money, heard all this, and they ridiculed him. So he said to them, You are those who justify yourselves in the sight of others. But God knows your hearts, for what is prized by human beings is an abomination in the sight of God. The law and the prophets were in effect until John came. Since then, the good news of the kingdom of God is proclaimed, and everyone tries to enter it by force. But it is easier for heaven and earth to pass away than for one stroke of a letter in the law to be dropped. Anyone who divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery, and whoever marries a woman divorced from her husband commits adultery. We say together the words of the Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. So let us pray.
that this and all our days may be full of your praise. We pray to you, O Lord, that you will keep us this day without sin. We pray to you, O Lord, that we may walk before you in the paths of righteousness and peace. We pray to you, O Lord, that you will bless your people and lift them up forever. We pray to you, O Lord, that you will guide and protect us by your Holy Spirit and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. We pray to you, O Lord. And so let us commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. The collect for today. Almighty and everlasting God, we thank you that you have brought us safely to the beginning of this day. Keep us from falling into sin or running into danger. Order us in all our doings and guide us to do always what is righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil, and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.